Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you a overview of everything I plan on using in 2021. So we are talking sketchbooks, journals, planners, art journals, all sorts of good stuff. I have some new things that I've started here in January 2021. It sounds so weird to say it out loud. I can't believe it. I have a couple of very project specific sort of books that are in this pile. I have an art journal that is just like never ending. I'm trying to finish it. I'm so close. Just a nice big pile of stuff here that I thought might be kind of fun to just kind of give you a recap of everything that I plan on using and what I'm going to kind of be concentrating on creatively as I go into the new year here. One other book that is part of this pile that is not in front of me is the Big Stupid Sketchbook, which is actually just off to the side over here. But the thing is so big, I, I would have to like reset up my whole shot to get that beast in here. But the one thing I will say about the Big Stupid Sketchbook project, could that title be any longer, is that I find myself on that one coming up with a lot of ideas that are very pattern specific so less like a big sketchbook and more like a book of patterns so more to come on that because i think the next big stupid sketchbook episode is going to be me transforming it into a big book of patterns which is kind of the direction that it seems to be headed in so i'm gonna let it naturally evolve into that. So that is definitely one of the things that I'll be working on going into the new year is really trying to make a dent in that because it is such a fun format to work in. Um, so I, I would like to give it a little bit more love in the new year here. Okay, so let me just kind of put some things to the side. We have um, planners and journals. So I'll put this kind of over here. We have just uh, regular old sketchbooks, which let me put those there. Then I have my project specific things, which is sort of here. And then I have my altered book art journal here as well. So maybe we'll just start with the altered book journal since it's kind of the really only art journal that I have pulled out. And it's because I'm in a weird place right now with my art journaling. And I don't know if that's going to change as I, you know, creep into the year, or if I start working on things, I'm not really sure. But lately I've been finding that I'm not really drawn into art journaling in a book format, which is what I've been doing for years. I've always been in an altered book or in just a blank mixed media sketchbook of some sort, but I find myself really drifting away from this format. And I, I don't know if it's just a phase that I'm in right now, or I'm looking to try something new. I'm not really sure, but I've been working more on canvases and larger substrates. And that's kind of where my mixed media work is headed at this current moment. Again, this could all change literally in a week or 30 days, I have no idea. But I did want to include at least one of my altered book journals because if there's one that I'm gonna be working on, it would be this one. And this is of course the uh, Tragedies and Mysteries of Rock and Roll. You guys have heard me talk about these, these books for years because I've been working in these books for years. And I have several copies and this one is getting very, very close to completion. You can see the pages are pretty filled. It's a nice, thick, chunky art journal here. So I have some, you know, spreads that are kind of in progress that I have been working on in this that I definitely want to come back to and, and give a little bit more kind of love and attention to. See, so lots of in progress things. So there's maybe a handful of spreads, you know, I'd say maybe 10, maybe 10 or so that's probably left to complete in this book. Otherwise, this would be a completed art journal, which is an exciting thing to think about. So that's maybe the one draw to keep working in this is just that I'm so close to having a fully altered book here that it would be exciting to get that done. And then of course, share a giant like five hour flip of it because that's how long it would take me to get through it. Continuing right along, let's talk about some project specific kind of books or sketchbooks here. This one, on top here you have already met and know uh, and certainly my patrons know because I've been filming videos for that over there this is my D&D &D journal so my D&D &D journal is definitely uh, gonna be in the forefront going into the new year because this is something new that I'm doing um, it's just really fun kind of journaling and taking notes in this way and kind of been settling back into D&D &D again so it's been really fun to kind of work in this and I'm looking forward to continuing to expand this as 
we get deeper into our D&D campaign. This is definitely going to be a special book, a special journal. I have to say it's a D&D journal because there's really more note taking than there is illustrations. Uh, minus this ginormous spider here. This book is definitely making its way to the top of my pile simply because I'm playing D&D again more regularly. This is a every weekend occurrence that is taking place. So this is definitely going to fill up probably pretty quickly because guaranteed I'm working on this thing every week. Uh, this specific book, by the way, I'm so sorry, Olive is snoring in the background and there's nothing that I can do about it. So, um, Welcome to the soundtrack of my life, which is Pug Snores. This is the Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook in the soft cover. Quick note on this, I have worked in the hard covers for a long time. Actually, that um, Handbook for the Recently Deceased Sketchbook painted cover that's on my YouTube channel from a couple years ago, that is a hardcover Strathmore Mixed Media book. But the soft covers, I will say, are significantly better. Like, they're so much better than the hard covers. And I will get into that more as I kind of talk about my main sketchbook as well. So D&D Journal, top of the pile for sure. I'm loving working in this and I look forward to seeing where this goes. Uh, the next one that is just part of my routine and I'm getting pretty far along in it. I don't have too many pages left. This is about all, well, let's see. I've been filming videos with it. This is about all that's left here. So this is actually probably going to be something that I will complete within the next year. But this specifically is my project development sketchbook. And this is like my, what you would call maybe an ugly sketchbook or, it's just my sketchbook where I do a lot of swatches, I experiment with new materials in this, I work out the kinks for different projects and things that I'm working on, maybe it's like video ideas or larger projects. It's where kind of I dump things. So a really good example is like, this was some new watercolors that I was trying out, so we have a lot of swatches, we have me kind of like blending and playing with things. I also have, let's see, notes for uh, videos that I was filming, kind of processes that I was doing for Art Snacks videos. You can see this is me literally developing that video, trying to figure out what works with what and the overall project, like where it was going to go. So this is what why I just call it my project development sketchbook because it's really, it's where I work out my kinks and ideas for things. A lot of Art Snacks videos live in here, but a lot of also just like testing of materials as well. And I can't recommend this enough. This has been really helpful to have just something where I can dump stuff into and feel like it doesn't intertwine with kind of the nicer flow of my other sketchbooks. It's just nice to have something that this is all this does, which is great. So I'm getting towards the end of this and I'm, you know, this, nat this naturally will be completed on its own you know, whether I work focus on it or not because I default to this so much for testing things out. You'll also see that this too is the Strathmore Mixed Media in the soft cover too. This was actually the first one that I had gotten in this size and I liked it so much that that is why I bought one for my D&D journal because I had already kind of used it and I liked how, how well it lays flat. The pages really can take a lot of different media. It feels nice to work on, um, but the lay flat of it is also like a super nice perk. So, and this size has also been nice too, which is actually kind of on the larger size for me sketchbook wise, but um, this has, has worked out as a project development sketchbook quite a bit. Also to note, these are my own hollow ghost stickers, which I believe there's some of these left in my Etsy shop. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what those are from. Next up, this is actually a sketchbook that I don't believe I have shared much of, if at all, on YouTube. And this is a project specific sketchbook. This is my tarot deck sketchbook. So this is my book that has my tarot card notes in it. It has initial sketches, ideas, kind of general brainstorming as I'm building the Bybun tarot deck and creating those cards. I did need kind of a book that is just specific to that project so that as I kind of create sketches and things, it all lives in one place. And I also think that this is kind of, this could be a fun like behind the scenes sort of thing later on if and when I ever complete the deck and actually get it made. This could be a really fun kind of cool, um, you know, companion book that maybe goes with it. I'm not entirely sure. Now, I haven't shared a lot of this on YouTube and I'm I'm not ready to share it quite yet. Um, my patrons have seen it, so I'll just leave it at that. I will give you a little sneaky peek here. So for example, this is a current card that I'm working on. This is the magician. You can see I have kind of a sketch happening underneath this little tracing paper, which is actually what I'm gonna to use to then transfer the master design. But I have notes kind of underneath here of different colors and what I'm gonna use, meanings of the cards, stuff like that. Let's see, is there something else? 
Um, in some situations, like here is the star, here's like the original sketch for it that I used to then create the master illustration, notes on the meaning of the card, and then sometimes when I'm actually working on the card itself, I use the leftover material back into this sketchbook. So a lot of the leftover paint and stuff was stuff that I used on the actual card, same with the ephemera, and I just dump it back in here as a means of kind of filling up some extra space. So this is my tarot deck sketchbook. This will naturally continue to grow as I focus on that project. And that project is a huge goal for me for 2021. I really want to put a dent in that tarot card project. It's a very time consuming one, um, but I think it pairs well with just my whole general goal of just trying to focus on making a lot of art in 2021. I just, I need to make and produce more artwork. And I think the tarot project is a great way to kind of help nudge that goal along. So this is the book for this. This sketchbook, by the way, is from Danique, and I think it's just one of their regular sketchbooks. It just feels like a smooth kind of white paper in here, nothing super fancy. It doesn't take watercolor or water media very well, I will note that, so it's not something I would probably use in my regular day-to-day -day sketchbook life, but it is great for kind of note-taking um, and leftover paint and stuff like that. So, and it does lay really flat, which if you haven't learned already, that is a very important thing to me with choosing books. It's got to lay flat and this one does actually lay pretty nice and flat. So that is the tarot deck sketchbook, tarot project book. Uh, let's move on now to kind of my everyday sketchbooks as well as my planners. All right, so first let me tell you what these sketchbooks are. I have currently two sketchbooks in the works. I have a Strathmore mixed media in a smaller size, which I'm liking quite a bit for just kind of straightforward illustrations. Not something that I would use for mixed media work, so I would not recommend this as an art journal, but it's really great for just drawing inky stuff. It takes watercolor really well. Um, it, it does take media really well, but it's not something that I would necessarily build up a full art journal spread in. Maybe I would feel different in a hardcover. I'm not entirely sure, but when it comes to mixed media full spreads, I still like to default to the Moleskin Art Plus, which has always been my default favorite sketchbooks to use for a really long time. But I will say the Strathmore Mixed Media is slowly creeping its way up on my totem pole. This is probably my favorite sketchbook. This is probably number two, if I did have to pick a close second. To note on the stickers, of course, we have my Inky Witch stickers, which I think there's some of these in my Etsy shop. I'm not entirely sure. You can check that out. I don't know. Oh, this is Fran's stickers from her witchy pack from a really long time ago. And I don't know what this is from. This might be a Tim Holtz thing. I'm not entirely sure. And I have no idea who this is from. This was gifted to me, so I don't know. And then of course, this is one of Lee's Patreon stickers here on the front. Love her work. And I had to put this little bunny on the outside because hello, bun, how to do it. Ugh. Duh. So the function of these two sketchbooks is really mainly for like my everyday sketchbook. When I want to work out an idea for something, I want to illustrate something or just draw or sketch or practice, this is the one of two books that I would then be working in. This Moleskin I did start in January of 2020, so I'm reaching the year mark on this, but I will admit this past year I really did not make as much art as I would have liked to. This one I just started not that long ago. I want to say I started this around October because originally I I was gonna make this like my horror sketchbook and then it just turned into like my everyday one. They're kind of both sketchbooks that I do the same kind of work in, although this one I do more of the art journal spreads in. in. Um, I'm getting pretty far along on this one. I'd say I'm about halfway probably about halfway, but I do more time consuming work in this. So this is where you're gonna see kind of the full art journal spreads happening, whereas this one is going to be more of, you know, the drawings, the, the stuff with watercolor, um, you know, the standalone sort of illustrations. Sometimes I do messy stuff in it where I'm just kind of using up leftover media, um, or maybe I'm working out an idea for something. Did I do that in this one? No, it's a really good like just kind of warm up practice kind of place and singular illustration kind of place. That's what happens in this one. But this one I definitely do more mixed media work in. You can see I have a couple of sp spreads that are like in progress. I have, let's see, do I have another finished one somewhere? But not only do I do, I have just regular sort of sketches in this as well. But this, 
this sketchbook is just so great for full-blown art journal spreads. Like, I can really layer these pages up with stuff, and they're thick, you guys. Like, these pages are very hefty, but it's great for art journaling. I cannot recommend it enough. And even just this size, I think, what is this, 5 by 7 or something like that? I don't even know. Um, the size is perfect because I do work really small, so it just, like, fits my art journaling style really well but I'm about halfway through on this one hopefully I'll be able to make a dent and get a little bit more in I'm definitely revisiting this one I just was working in it last night um, the Moleskine Art Pluses man they've always been one of my favorites and they fill up my shelf the most I have more completed Moleskines in this size than anything else um, and then this little guy let's see how far am I on this I'm probably oh I'm more than halfway I'm more than halfway on this one watch out but I don't do as well developed like time-consuming things in this so that is the difference but these are my main two sketchbooks when I say I'm gonna work in a sketchbook it's gonna be in one of these two um, again with more of the art journaly heavier mixed-media stuff happening in this one but hopefully I can get one of these completed in the new year Okay, last but certainly not least, I have some new books in my life. Oh my gosh, Olive is snoring so loud. Boo boo, boo boo. I have two new books in my life and I am, I have fallen down the Hobonichi well, the Hobonichi rabbit hole very, very deeply. Um, it started with just kind of doing like, I had like a traveler's notebook size, like a standard that I was using as kind of my planner journal and I've been working on that kind of over the past year or so as kind of a place for like my personal journaling, a little bit of junk journaling as well as just my planner. But I have really figured out the kind of the format and style that I like to use as kind of like my, again, everyday journal planner. I call it a planner journal. I don't know what else to call it. But I realized that the format that I had developed in that Traveler's Notebook size would translate really well to this. So I got the, what is this? I got, haven't, haven't taken it out. Here we go. Oh, it's upside down. That doesn't help. Uh, I got the Hobonichi, the A6 size, the Avec, the January to June. And then I, I, it's a two pack. I have the other half of the year as well. But this is totally new to me. So this is new territory of using this delicious crinkly paper that I love so much and starting to put pictures and stickers and all that good stuff in there. I haven't double checked if I'm ready to share stuff on this. I mean, I'll give a little sneaky peek, I guess. Um, you know, I've put like my goals for the new year in here. I have like a whole kind of month filled up. I am slowly kind of going in and adding like little things, but I use it as like my actual, I use this as my actual planner. So I have like to-do lists in here and reminders and checklists and all that sort of thing. But I also use it as a place to kind of dump leftover media. So it's like if I want to just doodle something or if I have leftover watercolor or if I want to just dump in random scraps of things that I think is cool, that's where it kind of acts a little bit like a junk journal. Um, but it's so far it's been really fun to work in as just again a planner and a whenever I feel like dumping stuff in here kind of thing. So that is one of my new things for the year. I keep my little scrappies in here. Um, I will continue to kind of work on this and we'll see where it goes. Again, this is new to me, but I think I've worked out a lot of the kinks from kind of, again, working in that um, traveler size notebook to figure out my planner journal style. I'm looking forward to continuing to work in this. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Another new book that I have started that I'm very excited about is the five year. So I got myself a Hobonichi five year. I'm very excited about this. I hope that I stick with it. I don't know if I will, but I love the idea of having that five year snapshot of being able to turn to a page and see exactly where you were last year, the year before that, etc. When I, when I became a mom, I got more into this kind of planner journal vibes because I felt the need that I had to document something and, um, and not to bring up Patreon again, but my patrons have seen me kind of figure out what that is going to look like for the past year or so. Me trying to settle into different formats, experimenting with junk journaling, experimenting with you know, kind of journaling and saving things that are specifically for Roman. And then me realizing, no, I need to kind of journal and document from my own perspective because I know for me, like 
if my mom was to give me a book, I would rather read it from her perspective than her trying to like document me, if that makes any sense. I don't know. But I just thought that the five year would be a really cool way to kind of document those sort of moments and have it be a little bit more personal. And that's kind of why I'm not turning the page quite yet here. Um, but I'm just kind of doing a lot of writing and kind of watercolor action. I don't know how much of this I will actually share on YouTube because I might not feel comfortable, I'll be honest. But for right now, I'm just trying to build this into a habit of some sort. So I've been trying to do this right before I go to bed at the end of each day because I already know myself, I can see this being something that I fall behind on really, really quickly. Um, the good news is, is that it's very small space, so it's easy, <laughs> easy to kind of get down what you need to quickly. Um, but I, I hope I can stick with this because I, again, as a mom and being able to kind of just quickly look back on things that Roman is doing, you know, little achievements and how much he's growing. That's the kind of stuff I'd rather document in something like this versus, you know, my planner journal, which is like a hot mess where I also dump like stickers and stuff into. Um, so I think this will become a really great way to just document life and family and all that good stuff. So we'll see if I stick with it. I'll probably do a check-in with you guys at some point just to see how much I have stuck with it. But right now I'm just trying to get into creating that habit. And I think that's the big thing with even, even the planner journal is like how how can you make it into a habit? And my planner journal has become such a great place for, you know, when I have any little snippet of downtime, but I don't have a big chunk, you know, to work on something, this is a great place for me to kind of like, oh, I'll just spend 10 minutes gluing something or five minutes writing my to-do list or whatever it is. It helps me feel productive, even in those moments where I don't have time to sit down and make a ton of artwork. Oh, trying to bring the pile back in here. Blech. Maybe I should put it, put this upright. Maybe it would look better like this. Does that look better? Not really. All right, so there is a look at kind of my main sketchbooks and books going into the new year here. Hopefully I'll be able to kind of finish the ones that are in progress halfway done. Hopefully I'll be able to keep working on those projects that I'm kind of concentrating on, both the tarot deck project and continuing to really grow that D&D &D journal. We'll see where that goes. And then of course starting some new things like my five year and then just my little A6 Avec here. I'm looking forward to keeping on working on those and seeing just what happens. I mean, am I, I'm becoming a planner person. Oh my God, who am I? Even just a journaler, like an actual I'm writing entries of things. I did not do those things in the past and now I am doing it, so it's kind of wild. But anywho, I hope that this was helpful or entertaining in some way for you just to see what I'm gonna be working on in 2021. I'd love to know what you guys are gonna be concentrating on in 2021. Do you have sketchbooks you're trying to finish? Do you have a new planner you've started? I'd love to know in the comments down below. And of course, if you have any questions for me, you can leave them for me in the comments there too, and I will do my best to address them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.